Mr. Speaker, the month of May is recognized as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Research indicates that sexual assault is prevalent. There were 633 sexual assaults reported to police in New Brunswick in 2019. However, there are many more incidents of sexual violence occurring that we don't hear about because we know sexual violence is significantly under underreported. Mr. Speaker, make no mistake, it happens every single day in New Brunswick, several times a day. Sexual assault has a long-term impact on survivors, both physically and mentally. Each of us can support survivors of sexual violence in our communities by believing them and challenging attitudes and behaviors that promote and perpetuate sexual violence and victim blaming. We can take action when we see it happening in our daily lives. Let's think about the role we can each play in eliminating sexual violence in our communities, not just in the month of May, but year-round. The, the Women's Equality Branch has been leading a variety of initiatives to address sexual violence. The Now You Know campaign aims to raise awareness and educate New Brunswickers on sexual violence, encourage discussion, and is a call to action. Resources are available at gnb.ca, now you know. We've been working with government and community partners to coordinate efforts to respond to sexual violence. We support and encourage our partners to take sexual assault crisis intervention training. We were pleased that Anglophone South School District staff participated just recently. We've engaged with communities within public post-secondary institutions to address campus sexual violence. We must all continue to work together to recognize sexual violence, call it out, and support survivors. Mr. Speaker, thank you. The Deputy Caracat in the gallery. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Alors, merci à la, Madame la Ministre pour sa déclaration au sujet de du mois de sensibilisation aux agressions sexuelles. En fait, la violence sexuelle, c'est une question de, de pouvoir et de contrôle. C'est euh, dans le fond, la violence sexuelle viole les droits fondamentaux, fondamentaux d'un être humain, en particulier son intégrité. Et bien sûr, on doit tous et toutes soutenir les survivantes et les survivants en s'assurant que notre système judiciaire, juridique, notre société civile euh, et que toutes nos institutions répondent adéquatement à leurs besoins. Cette année et l'année passée, évidemment, euh, les activités de sensibilisation de ce mois ont été importantes, surtout euh, en raison de la covid on sait que les effets et les répercussions de la COVID ont été immenses. En fait, ils ont amplifié les inégalités systémiques de longue date entre les sexes. De là, la nécessité d'utiliser une analyse comparative entre les sexes euh, dans les initiatives qu'on prend tout au long de la pandémie. L'importance aussi de tenir compte des répercussions économiques sexo-spécifiques et intersectionnelles. Euh, évidemment, on a encore, on a d'autres pré préoccupations, donc ça ne serait pas encore plus loin euh, dans tout ce qui a trait à la, à, à la violence sexuelle. Je pense à la traite de personnes euh, pour fins sexuelles, un autre danger important pour la santé et la sécurité euh, des femmes et des filles aujourd'hui. Alors, euh, bravo pour les initiatives que vous avez nommées, Madame la Ministre. Évidemment, vous avez mon soutien euh, en, en, pour, pour, pour contrer cette violence sexuelle. Euh, je rappellerai aussi qu'il y a une femme sur trois qui sera victime d'agression à caractère sexuel dans sa vie. Une, fa une femme sur trois, c'est immense. Et 95 des victimes ne signaleront pas leur agression à la police. Alors, la violence sexuelle, c'est parfois, c'est un des crimes qui est le moins déclaré au Canada. Alors, bravo. Uh, member. Thank you. The member for Member Cook, Tantramar. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm rising today in response to the minister's statement recognizing Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And it is essential to draw attention to this issue. Um, this impacts so many people in New Brunswick, and it doesn't impact everyone equally. Um, this is often a, a gendered, in, uh, gendered issue that uh, does tend to impact women more, um, but men can also be impacted. Um, People in the LGBTQ plus community, as well as racialized people, tend to, to be impacted more. And there, there are some concrete actions that can be done in addition to, to what has been laid out here. For one thing, um, 
the recommendations of the needs analysis and best practices review of sexual harm to children has yet to be made public been waiting since the beginning of last year so that needs to be released um, we we need to see legislation for post-secondary campuses uh, to ensure that there are adequate policies and adequate consultation done with student advocates and survivors we need to ensure there's adequate funding for trauma-informed support services uh, accessible to all post-secondary campuses and that the approach is always survivor-centered. We also can't forget there are big issues connected to sexual violence like affordable housing, like pay equity, that we must have an intersectional approach. And according to Draw the Line, sexual assault is the only violent crime that is not declining in Canada. And so there is a lot more to be done in New Brunswick and across Canada. And, uh, and I will continue to, to do my best and to collaborate to, to work to ensure that we have a survivor-centered approach to this issue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member for Miramichi in the gallery. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And um, I'm proud to rise today to, uh, to speak on, on this uh, ministerial statement from um, Minister responsible for uh, women's equality and the sexual assault awareness month um, you know we've all been there with people and and most of us know somebody that's that's uh, been affected and you know the facts that are in this that there's only 633 cases that are report, reported um, are sad and not so shocking uh, we know that you know many go unreported and and uh, we have to really encourage people to get out and and uh, feel safe to, to come out and, and share their stories. Um, I want to acknowledge um, Lisa McNeil, and the, the, um, who's the coordinator for um, the Domestic Violence Outreach Coordinator at the Miramichi Emergency Shelter in Miramichi, and they've been doing amazing jobs. They have an, an annual campaign um, to help people face it and to help people come out and, and share their stories and to get help, so I think that's really important. Uh, and it's a, a great thing to be a part of. So um, I just want to thank the minister for, for the, uh, the work that she's doing, and, uh, and I think we can all do a lot more to help. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.